I wanted to jump on and do a quick video. I've been talking to a lot of clients this week about just making content. So that's why I'm just using my phone here. I'm not even using a tripod, which is annoying because there's three looking at me. But I thought if I was to just tell my client to jump on, make a video, talk about what you know you can talk about, you don't have to edit it, just use a raw edit. Then I thought rather than just telling, I would do, and then you would see that it's not that difficult. If you're going to go on and make content about something that you are an expert in, so if you're an expert in mental health, if you're an expert in journaling, meditating, counting calories, fitness, whatever it is, then you don't have to really sit and think and come up with a special, magical video idea. You just need to have one idea. Like today I have one idea. Shoot the rawest video possible. I'm not using any equipment. I don't have any lights on. I don't have any, I don't even have the lights behind me on, I just realized. I'm literally just finished um, my work for the day. I'm holding the phone instead of using any one of the tripods that I have because I'm trying to cut out all of the barriers that people have. And all I'm going to do in this video is top and tail it. So if you don't know what top and tailing is, top and tailing is I'm going to cut the top of it, the start of the video where I'm picking the camera up and getting ready. And then when this is over, when I'm dropping the camera or reaching forward to press the button, that's topping and tailing. That's as much editing as I'm going to do. Unless I say something, my arm's dead already because I was at the gym because I'm a beefcake. Unless I say, probably like this, unless I say something mental or go off on some sort of crazy tangent, I'm not going to bother editing this. So a few things to look out for when you're doing this. One is I'm using the front facing camera because again a lot of my clients use it and you'll notice now that I'm looking at myself on the screen rather than looking over here at the lens. When I look at the lens my eye contact is much better and I'm more it's more engaging and people watching it you can let me know in the comments but people watching will feel more connected to you because you're doing that. A lot of people have the tendency to look at themselves whenever they're talking and when you're doing that like it looks like I'm looking over there because I I am because the lens is right there. So whenever you're coming up with your video idea, just think of one thing that you've been asked this week. What has somebody asked you in the week that you could talk about? And because you're an expert, you don't need to start panicking and being super precise and getting every word correct and talking about real intricate things. You just need to put your video on and start recording and then start talking about whatever it is that you want to talk about. So the main things, I'll talk about five main things I think you should look out for when you are making these type of raw videos. First thing is important to note is that I have, an, I have no plan for this video. So the fact that I've just threw out the number five is interesting because now I have to come up with five things. And you might think that this bit of a statement is me stalling and trying to hope my brain finds them, but let's go. So number one, you're an expert. You already know what you're talking about. Maybe you're not an expert at doing videos or lighting or anything, but you're an expert in your field. You know your clientele. You know your followers. So just talk about something that you're very comfortable talking about. Number two, think about one of your clients and then imagine you're talking to them. So if I was to do this and I just think about one person and I start to talk as if I'm directing my entire conversation towards them. It makes it much easier for me to stay on track because I know what they would be thinking. I know they're thinking, I know, but Liam, I don't have lights or I don't have a fancy camera. I don't have a fancy setup. So because I know that, per that person would be thinking that, that's where I'm able to direct this conversation. So I don't know if that's what you're thinking or if it's one of the things you're thinking. But number one, is the first thing that I said. I'm probably going to forget what these are. <laughs> but uh, number one is just shoot, as far as I remember. And number two is, I really shouldn't have done arm day before trying to hold the phone. My phone's not massive, but anyway, arms just really tired. <laughs> uh, and number two is think of one person you're speaking to and then speak to them. So the third thing you want to do is have a basic idea of editing. So if I do want to cut any of this, which I'm not going to do, if I want to cut any of this, I know I can just use a jump cut in the middle. So if I say something mental here, then I can cut and then I can go to the bit where I end the mental statement and cut there again. 
then I can cut that out of the video and that's what a jump cut would be. To hide the jump cut a little, I'll zoom in or zoom out. There is a video on my YouTube channel already that will teach you everything you need to know about jump cuts. Personally, I get the most feedback on jump cuts saving coaches time in their edits because they usually start again. Whenever they make a mistake, they start again. But because they know how to jump cut, they don't need to start again. They just can start that sentence again and then they just move on from there. So that's your first three. Uh, the fourth one, it's mad trying to keep track of all this at the same time. The fourth one I would suggest is do it often. A lot of people will make their video, so this is already over five minutes. They'll make their video and then they'll watch it back and critique it and they'll try it, they'll look at it and they'll think, Mom, my lighting was off and I was talking badly and I was looking around me and they come up with all these issues that they have within their video. Then they try it, they think, right, that's not good enough. I need to make a new one and they'll try to, whoops, that's a bad way to hold that. They'll try to fix everything all in one go, but that's a terrible idea. What you want to do is watch it back and fix one thing. So if I was to watch this back, I could look at that and go, I probably should have had a mic. Or I could look at it and go, maybe turning on some lights would be better. But I'm lucky my office actually has a window. So if you are shooting, I'll just give you an insight into that. The window is there. So when I'm here, that lights up my face. If I'm here, there's all my post-it notes. And you can see now, as you're getting this wee inner cider peak, my fake wall is only where I normally have my camera. If I'm here, my fake wall's gone. And if I go here, my fake wall's gone. Hopefully this spinning isn't annoying. So the light there is bad because my face is now dark and the light's behind me. So I move position. So you can see that lights me up better. So I'm using all of the things that you have. Everybody watching this has a phone. Everybody watching this has a window. Most places, I'm in Northern Ireland, so we don't get a lot of sun, but most places will have some sort of sun. So you watch your video back and you just fix one thing and then you just keep doing that. The easiest way to do it is to do it in stories. I personally think if you use Instagram stories, then you can tweak every single day. So every day you can get slightly better, but Today we're talking about long form because that's what I've been telling my clients to do. Long form. So the fifth one is long form is a cheat sheet, cheat sheet, cheat. Fast track, that will be better than cheat sheet. Fast track, whenever I was younger, fast track was the name of the go karting place, but that's not what we're talking about. Fast track way to get no like and trust. It's given people an opportunity to spend a lot of time with you in a short amount of time. So if I just had a tripod, which I actually do have one right in front of me, I'll show you this in a, in a moment. But I just open my tripod as we go. If you had a wee bit of extra equipment, like this tripod is rather cheap. So I can now set up a much better shot with that tripod. So just spending a couple, I'm going to go back to handheld just to be more authentic. Um, if you don't have one, but like you can lay it up against books or things in the gym on the squat rack or whatever but the point is that it, you can just i could go right one of the issues i had with this one is my arm kept dying because of yesterday's gym so i had to move quite a bit and it's probably quite annoying to watch let me know in the comments if it is annoying to watch but even if, and i keep cutting off my head uh even if it's not annoying if i had a tripod it would just make things so much easier if i faced the light that's going to be better than if I have my back to the light. So just fix, you fixing one thing at a time and coming back. I know I'll just jump back to number four, but it's important to, because too many people get stuck in their own way. So trying to fix one thing at a time will help you to make more comfortable videos. But when you do the long form, your arm won't be dead because you've got to be tripod. But you watching this video now, you'll see like, I'm just doing this as a flow of consciousness. So I've talked about fast track. I've went on wee rants about my wall. I've, you're getting to see my personality a bit more than you would in a 30 second video. So you're getting to see me just go off on wee rants. So that's how people can connect with me. One of the reasons that my clients come to me is because they've seen my videos where I talk about how I was a corporate trainer and speaker in the past and how I was a coach. So. They know that I understand the business. I was a personal trainer in my past life as well. 
so they understand it. I've journaled for, I think it's now 1,325 days without fail, which is a lot. If you're a journaler and you track every day, that's how long I've been journaling without ever missing a day, even though life has been hectic at different times. So I've done that. I've meditated every single day since I was 17 years old. I haven't missed a single day. I meditate one to three times a day for different reasons. So there's loads of different videos where I've talked about these things in depth. So then people can come to me and, and they'll say, I really liked your editing techniques and I really liked the things that you taught. But actually it was the fact that me and you journal and I know you'll get it. I think journaling is really important and I know you'll get what I'm talking about. So do a long form. One, you can just do it off the cuff. I have one idea. My idea today is to talk about doing long form. I happen to come up with five things that I'll try to recap at the end and see if I remember them. And if I don't remember them, just rewind it and you can rewatch it. But I, <laughs> my brain is now racking itself to try to find out where they are. Uh, so if, So I've come up with five ideas that you can run with and then Throughout this video, you'll notice I'm talking about techniques and things I can teach you that are, are not the main point of this video. But if you're watching this and you think, oh, whatever, he was, when he was talking about jump cuts, that's brilliant. That will save me time. Now you're more likely to reach out to me and ask about jump cuts or go find that video. I'll probably just put this video at the end, probably there, but not now, later. You're, you're, you're seeing that you can do it off the cuff. It doesn't matter about the things that you have, tripods, mics, anything. As long as you have a phone with a camera, then you can do this. Like I didn't even do my hair or anything for this. I just jumped straight on after all of my work. I wear an old school Superman jumper that I've had for I think about 10 years. Uh, Cause I like, as there's a version where I'm how do you, there. There's a superhero, <laughs> Superman version of me as well. So the no like and trust be so strong in these videos because you can see a lot of the personality because in 30 seconds I can pretend to be whoever I want to be but in this sort of video it's much more freeing for me and then for you if you've actually managed to stick around for 12 and a half minutes ish then you've got a good insight into what I do and why I do it and who I am. So as a recap if I can remember one is just shoot, just start shooting content. You can't get better if you don't do it. Two is something that I forget. I might come back to that one, but it's in the video, so it's fine. Uh, three, now that I forgot two, I'm starting to forget them all. So I'll just do a recap recap, which the recap recap would be, if you make mistakes, you can just jump cut them out, so it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna do that today, but in general, I obviously would. Um, shoot the content, get the content done, People will know, like, and trust you if you're doing long form. You can cut the long form into short form using your own skills within CapCut or something like that that you can learn off my course. Or just use an Opus clip, which I also have a video on on my page that will save you time. Use whatever you have. Don't worry about tripods. Don't worry about lights. Don't worry about mics. Just use whatever you have at the in the vicinity. Um... What was the other one? The other one, oh, I know, like, and trust is created better by people who get an opportunity to spend a bit longer with you than just a quick 30 second video. Pretty sure that was all my points. I'm not 100%. You can drip in little bits about yourself and what you do and what you can teach and why people should follow you. And on that note, if you enjoyed this video, let me know below and I'll speak again soon.